Hallelujah. The third evidence is what we call the growth evidence. Amen. Okay? The growth evidence. Uh, last night as I was doing Bible study, you know, uh, a new revelation was dropped into my heart and we were sharing uh, last night's uh, Bible study at, uh, uh, not on the study on 7 p.m., but the study uh, after, like it was 10 p.m. Uh, over here. And then uh, this uh, revelation here, okay, when God poured out his spirit, okay, I want you to grab hold of this. When God, you know, poured out his spirit, the source himself is coming into us. The source, okay? But and then, not only the source that was in us, or that he has put on us, but he has given us the resources to. See, most of the time, we keep praying for the resources when we don't realize that the source is already in us and with us. If God, if the Holy Spirit is in us and with us, that means automatically the resources are going to be supplied to us. And what are those resources? The resources are the fruit of the Spirit. The resources are the gifts of the Spirit. Okay? There are two different types of God's, uh, the, the gifts of the Spirit. Number one is what we call the motivational gifts. And the other one is the supernatural gifts. And then the third one is the office gifts, which are five. So I just want to bring that before we move forward to the third evidence, okay? We've talked about the supernatural evidence the other two days. Number one is speaking in tongues. Number two is what, well, anyone still remember what's the second one? It is boldness to preach the word, okay? And what's the third one that we touched on on Friday? The third one is sense of all, wonders and signs, okay? Will be displayed when we are filled and full of the Holy Spirit, okay? If we are not seeing signs and wonders, if people are not reverencing God, then that shows that uh, we are not taking the Holy Spirit seriously in our walk with God, amen. So now let's go to the third evidence, major evidence, is what we call the growth evidence. There are two points, okay? in this growth evidence. Number one, I want us to read Acts chapter two, verse 41 to 47, okay? So the third evidence, major evidence is the growth evidence. And it is in Acts chapter two, verse 41 to 47. But I'm gonna read for the first one, I'm gonna read the Acts chapter two, verse 41 to 42, okay? And then it says, so then who, those who accepted his message were baptized. And on that day, about 3,000 souls were added. They were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instructions of the apostles and to fellowship, to eating meals together and to prayers. So the first growth evidence is what we call the numerical growth, okay? So numerical growth, which means the saving and multiplication of new souls. That means when we are filled and full of the Holy Spirit, one of the, the, the uh, major evidence that we wish we should expect is that growth evidence. And under that growth evidence, there has to be new souls saved, not only new souls saved, but there has to be multiplication. You understand that? Okay? So what we see that we, they did not only experience the, the spiritual evidence, which was the wind of the spirit and the fire of the Holy Spirit. 
They did not only experience the supernatural evidence, which is the speaking in tongues, the bonus to stand up and preach, and also signs and wonders was displayed. But and then the third major evidence, and that is the growth evidence of which salvation, saving, and multiplication of souls was evident. It was displayed, displayed. Okay. In verse 40 to 42, we see that three, how many souls were saved? How many souls were saved? The, after, right after Peter's message and, and bonus preaching? 3,000. 3,000, that is in verse 40 to 42. Okay. okay. So see this, 3,000 has already been saved. Okay, let's read verse 46 to 47. Okay. If you are just joining in, we, we, we're studying uh, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 47. Eh? Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 47. Okay, the second one is verse 46 to 47. Can anyone read that to us, please? Do you know where the book of Acts is at? Don't, don't, don't start looking in the Old Testament because you'll, you'll finish all the, uh, the Old Testament. You're still uh, not going to find the, uh, the book of Acts. So the book of Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament. Okay, if anyone has that, please read it. It says, every day they continue to meet together in temples court. They broke bread with their homes and ate together with glad and sincere heart, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So imagine the 3,000 already been saved. Every day they meet together in church in their houses. They fellowship together. And then they praising God. Remember, they were praising God. They were having fellowship when they were doing that. And this is what the Lord did. And the Lord, no one else, the Lord, the Holy Spirit. And he keeps adding new souls into the time of fellowship. So the 3,000 increases, it multiplies. And added the number of men came to be uh, so it and I keep adding to their number daily. Remember daily, that means every day the number increases. Okay. So that's the second, uh, uh, what's called the multiplication. Okay. The adding of new souls. Now let's go to Acts chapter four, verse one to four. Okay. Uh, I know it's a long, uh, a long verses, but I'm not gonna read it. In Acts chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, it says there are 5,000 souls saved. So remember this, from 3,000, and then they, it, you know, they were added daily. And then in chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, there were 5,000 souls again being saved. See, but many of those who heard the message of salvation believed in Jesus and accepted him as the Christ. And the number of the men became to be about 5,000. So think of this. It says there are men, M-E-N. So if 5,000 is just the number for men, I don't know what would be the, if the total number if we add men, uh, women and uh, young people. Hmm. But it says there are 5,000. So from 3,000, every day it was added. Okay. Who was adding it? Not the pastors, not the apostles, not the evangelists. It was God because it says there, and God was adding daily, daily. It is God's work to add. Our work is to preach the gospel when we are full of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So 5,000, 3,000, the Lord keep adding, and then another 5,000, not including women and young people. Okay. All right, Acts chapter 5, verse uh, 12 to 14. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. 
Okay. Let me read these verses. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were continually taking place among the people. Remember what we just talked about. One of the uh, supernatural evidence is the signs and wonders that is attest to the apostles or to those who are going out to preach the gospel. And then it goes on to say, and by common consent, they all met together okay, at the temple in the covered porch called Solomon's port, uh, portico. But none of the rest or the people, the non-believers dared to associate with them. Remember the non-believers, they dare to associate with the believers. Do you wonder why the non-believers don't want to associate with you? That's why we got to associate ourselves with the believers. Because we have one common uh, denominator and that is, the, that is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it says over there. And then they to associate with them. However, the people were holding them in high esteem. Wow, think of this. No, when the non-believers know that you are a spirit-filled believer, they will hold high esteem of you. Hallelujah. And we're speaking highly of them. You may never know that you are full of the Holy Spirit. You're preaching the word of God. You're doing the word of God, but people are looking at you and you will never know that they will, uh, uh, they will uh, uh, be talking about you and, uh, and speaking highly of you. So, and then it goes on to say, more and more believers in the Lord. And then it goes to say, crowds of men and women, crowds. So it's no longer the 3,000, it's no longer the 5,000, it becomes the crowds. What does that mean? That means they are not able to count. <laughs> They are not able to count how many people are gathering to hear the message and be saved. Okay? And then they say, we're constantly being added to their number to such an extent that they even carried their sick. Look, hear this. They even carried their sick out in the streets and put them on cots and sleeping beds so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one of them. Wow. Let me go slowly again from the 3,000. And then daily the numbers were added, the new souls. And then the 5,000, not including the women and the young people. And here it becomes the crowds. It means they can no longer count how many people were there. Okay? But then this is what they did. So they brought Okay, all that was sick into the streets and put them on their sick beds. And then this is how they believed. And they said, when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one of them. I just want to encourage us every time we are full, baptized and filled of the Holy Spirit, we are carrying the presence of God with us. And it's through the presence of God alone that people can be sick, can be healed. The sick, the, the illness can be healed when we carry the presence of God with us. When the Holy Spirit is going with us, if only people know that we are spirit-filled believers who have God's presence that can touch lives, that can transform lives, that can heal the sick. Oh, aren't you excited about this? But, you know, we are not excited. You know why? Because we are not seeing this a lot. We are, we are running after conference. We are running after huge gathering in all the stadiums. And we even are running after, you know, those that have the gift of healing. We are not running after the healer himself. And that is Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit who can touch us and refresh us through his Holy Spirit. If you want the crowds to run, hallelujah. If you want to gather the crowds, just draw the presence of the Holy Spirit in, in our life. You see, you see how the multiplication was was you know was transiting. Eh? So from the three thousand 
to the daily you know, adding, okay, adding. Remember, adding and multiplication are different. Okay? So, you know, the Lord is tired of adding. He wants multiplication over us. We want, we always do the adding, one, 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 one plus one, but God want to do multiplication. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So from the 3,000 to the daily added, and then the 5,000, the fourth one is the crowds, and then the fifth one in Acts chapter 5 verse 16. Okay? Acts chapter 5 verse 16. And then the people from the town in the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together, bringing the sick and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. Remember, from crowds now to the city. Some of us, we are still going after the 3,000. Some of us, we are still going after the ending. Some of us are still going after the 5,000 or even the crowds. But now, it's no longer the crowd, it's the city. You know, we are here in Reno, one of the city in Nevada. And for those that know Reno, Reno is Reno. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine if a city said, and this city was Jerusalem. You remember when Jesus said to the disciples, go and wait for the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then you'll receive power to be a witness. And then you will start in Jerusalem. So right now, this is where Jerusalem starts. Oh, so not only from this to the city, and then Acts chapter 5, verse 41 to 42. The sixth one, hallelujah. Acts chapter 5, verse 41 to 42. The apostles left the high council, rejoicing that God has counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple, remember this, in the temple and from house to house, they continue to teach and preach this message that Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. He's no longer the city. It's no longer the crowds, but they are going to all churches and all, all the houses. See, the Lord doesn't want us to keep the message in the churches. He wants us to take the message to the streets. Take it to all houses. I know we live in America. You know, it has a lot of, you know, city rules and all those. Even those that own the houses, when you knock the door to, to share the gospel to them, they will shut the door in, uh, in your face. They will tell you, I don't need to hear that. Hallelujah. But when we are full of the spirit, we will not be bothered by that. Hallelujah. We will knock on every doors. We will gather in every churches so that the gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached and the power of the Holy Spirit need to be displayed, displayed this evening. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, this is getting excited. Okay, so it's no longer in the houses and the churches. In Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 25. Okay. In Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 25. So it's no longer the 3,000, the adding, the 5,000, the crowds, the city, the churches and houses. Now it says that people have been saved in Judea and Samaria. You remember, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. So the gospel has moved. The Holy Spirit has moved the gospel. Hallelujah. The new growth, a, you know, the, the numerical growth has been, uh, been evident. Multiplication is no longer the, the add and the minus. It's a multiplication by multiplication. That means the saving of souls has been multiplied. You know, if we are not seeing multiplication of souls being saved in our church, in our ministry, in our city, in our community, in our houses, we need to reevaluate how are we valuing the Holy Spirit, 
How are we descending the Holy Spirit? How are we preaching the, the message that the Holy Spirit is uh, releasing to us uh, for the people to hear the message? You remember when we started off on the second night, uh, I said that uh, nowadays we, most of the preachers are not preaching the message that will pierce the hearts of men. We are preaching the message that is sugarcoating and pleasing to the ears of men. Remember when Peter stood up and preached the word of God, oh, the, the crowd could not so long stand the power of the message. And they said, what shall we do in order for us to, uh, to fulfill and to obey the message that you've been preaching? <coughs> Hallelujah. Preachers, I'm challenging us. Is our message piercing the hearts of the people or is it pleasing the people? Uh, I let that, I leave that to you. You figure that out. But I believe when we are full of the Holy Spirit, our message will never please the hearers. Our message will pierce their hearts so that transformation and change can take place. Oh, Rashikiri Andala Rabo Roshakaya. So not only in Judea and Samaria, but as we we'll read in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. We read about Philip. <coughs> Philip is just a deacon. He's not an apostle. Hallelujah. He's just a deacon. He's not an apostle. But and then the Lord, he was full of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit lead him <coughs> to the earth. If you bring an ark, an ark, Okay, so this is where the message is not only in Judea and Samaria, but it has moved to the ends of the earth. And we all know the Ethiopian and Enoch is from Africa. He was reading the book of the scroll that, uh, that, that, that says the uh, reading of Isaiah. He couldn't even understand. There are many people who can read the Bible, but they do not understand. But God, for those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, God will lead us to those who need a clear understanding of his word so that they can not only understand, but they will be saved. You know, I can say that a lot of us, a lot of Christians are reading the Bible, but they don't understand what they're reading. Hallelujah. So it is our responsibility as the spirit-filled believer, hallelujah, is to teach them and preach the word of God to them so that they can understand and be saved this evening. So to the ends of the earth, see, there's going to be numerical growth when we are full and filled of the Holy Spirit. If there is no numerical growth, then like I always say, we better check what kind of spirit we are filled and full of. Well, who's, what kind of spirit that is leading us? What kind of spirit is talking to us? Oh, hallelujah. I pray it is the Holy Spirit, none other else. Oh, Not only that, it reaches the ends of the earth. But if you study the history of the church, eh? There were great awakenings in Europe, here in America, in Africa, even nowadays. There were great awakenings in America. People are waiting for the fifth great awakening where there will be a mighty revival like never before. There were so many revival of great awakening happened in America. And I'm glad that uh, the denomination that I was brought up uh, from was one of the denominations that was birthed during that uh, Great Awakening, and that was in Azusa Street Revival. For those that know that, uh, that revival that uh, took place in Azusa Street, it was in uh, 1907, and uh, there were so many denominations and ministries that are well known nowadays was birthed during that time. And I'm blessed that I was part of one of those uh, 
But you know, great denomination that uh, allow the feeling of the Holy Spirit and uh, ministry and preaching under the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that we will not uh, take uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and also the Holy Spirit himself lightly. We have to embrace him. We have to embrace his power. We have to embrace his presence. And we have to embrace his work. We have to embrace his will, what he desired to do. And we shall flow with the Holy Spirit this evening. Hallelujah. The second growth. And we're going to finish off this evening. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second growth that we will, uh, uh, we will, uh, we will see that is evident, and that is what we call the spiritual growth. Okay, the spiritual growth is not only the numerical growth, but there was spiritual growth taking place. Remember our first uh, evidence, major evidence, and that is the spiritual evidence when the wind of the spirit blow afresh in us, and when the fire of the Holy Spirit burn deep within us. So our spiritual life, our, our life changes from a natural old and uh, into a uh, spiritual and newness of life with Christ. But in here, see, we can uh, we can experience the spiritual uh, evidence of being born again and being uh, being saved and and also feeling the the refreshing wind of the Holy Spirit and His fire burning in us. But uh, spiritual growth will define. Uh, your, your, how you sustain your spiritual life with God. Hallelujah. They did not only experience numerical growth, but that they experienced spiritual growth in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Hallelujah. This is how we are able to define whether we are growing or we are decreasing or we are dying out. Oh, we are shortness of breath. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. There are five things. Hallelujah. There are five things. Four th five things that the uh, that the apostles and all those that were saved, they remember the 3,000 that were saved. This is how their spiritual growth was evident. Number one, the believers, they were, they were devoting themselves. What does devote mean? It means they've been truthful, they've been loyal, they've been faithful and steadfast in what they are committing themselves to. Hallelujah. If we want to check whether we are spiritually growing, let's just check whether we are devoted to God, whether we are devoted to Jesus, whether we are devoted to the Holy Spirit, whether we are devoted to his word. When I say devoted, I mean it says that we are truthful, we are loyal, we are faithful, and we are steadfast. Steadfast means it continues, never ends. Hallelujah, like I was saying, sometimes we are lazy. Sometimes we have, you know, things are gonna come across and then we put aside what we are devoted to, especially in our prayer life. Hallelujah. Most of the time we, we say, oh, it's okay. I can miss now and then I can um, pray again in the next hour or probably tomorrow I'll do my prayer time. Oh, oh no, okay, today's Bible study. Oh, I can't miss today, I'll go next week. That's not devoted, that's not devoted. We see daily, daily, we are living in a busy time. We are living in a busy time. And we have to check whether we are devoted to God, devoted to Jesus, Devoted to the Holy Spirit, devoted to prayer to, uh, to, to his word, and devoted into meeting together. Number two, 
Hallelujah. They were devoted to the apostle teachings. What is the apostle teachings? The apostle teachings is the word of God. It's the word of Christ. What Christ taught the disciples and even Christ told the disciples, you gonna teach them everything that I have taught you. So in other words, what, uh, what, um, what they were experiencing, that they were going after every teachings that the disciples or the apostles were teaching them. That means it's so important that we are devoted to the teachings of the word of God and we be careful. There are so many teachings that is going around that can uh, twist the truth of God's word uh, into our lives this evening. So be careful on, on, on preachers and those that you hear. Hallelujah. If anything is being preached or being taught, go back to the word of God. Align it to the word of God. If it doesn't go together, you need to be careful with that this evening. Praise the Lord. And the second, the third one, fellowship. They were not, they were devoted to the fellowship. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 10, 25, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is growing now. Remember, that is the work of the enemy to cut off and to make us neglect our meeting together, our coming together as brothers and sisters, as uh, children of God, as believers of Christ and the Holy Spirit. So we gotta be, gotta have a time of fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. In fellowship, we build and encourage one another in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. This is why fellowship is very important. You gotta, you gotta find a, a group that uh, you can fellowship together, encourage and build uh, and edify one another. You cannot be a loner in this journey. Oh, we gotta find a small group that you can connect to and be edified and be built up in a spiritual walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. Our fellowship is with God and our fellowship is one and with one another. If we, if our fellowship with God is not uh, properly, uh, you know, been, uh, been, been, uh, been activated, then our fellowship with one another as believers will be affected this evening. Oh, hallelujah. Our fellowship with the body of Christ, we're going to assemble together, not, uh, you know, division. We're going to come together as one whole body. Okay, an example, if you take your parts apart, what will happen to your whole body? Your hands will go the other way. Your eyes will look the other way. And then your legs will go the other way. And all other parts are, are going on their own direction or doing their own thing. But we need to be assembled together. Oh, Assemble together. Assemble together, children of God. Assemble together, believers of God. And especially spirit of, spirit-filled believers this evening. Hallelujah, we got, you know, we've been hearing the teaching from our, our pastor about the cell lessons. He was emphasizing about the small groups that is very, that is very valuable for us to have a small group and connect it to. Remember, you know, it says in the second Timothy chapter two, verse two, we got to assemble in small groups. You know, most of the time we just want to go for the bigger groups. And we know what's the reason why you want to go in a, in a crowd or in a bigger groups. <laughs> yeah, some of us want to go, you know, in a larger gathering so that uh, either you don't, want, you don't want people to see you or you don't want to commit yourself. But when we are in a small group, we are connected, we are committed, and everyone can know what you are doing, even if you're trying to hide something. Oh, Okay, not only that, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. We're gonna meet him together one on one. We're gonna find someone that you two can encourage one another. Build one another up. Hallelujah. And then sharing and communicating truth together. That is in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. We gotta share and communicate the truth of God's word. He didn't mean for us to share and communicate, destroying one another. 
we're going to talk about the truth of God's words. Not only that, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, we're going to share together in worship. Share together in worship. That's why when we come to praise and worship, we got to come to worship God together. Even though we are individual, but we're going to come corporately and worship him. Individual worship takes place in your own uh, small space, your own personal time. Hallelujah. Amen. And lastly, we're going to be sharing together as partners. Hallelujah. Remember this work. We are partners. We got to share together. No one can do the work of God by himself or himself. We got to partners together. And it will make the work of God effective, powerful this evening. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the fourth one, the sharing of the Lord's Supper and their personal meal. They do not only share their, their, their personal meal, but they share the communion, the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. That is in Acts chapter 1, verse 21 to 22. And lastly, lastly is prayer. They were committed. They were devoted to prayer. Right after Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 3, verse 1. It says Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. That means prayer is part or part of uh, those who are spirit filled or those who have been baptized and full of the spirits. Prayer, we have to engage in prayer. And no wonder Romans uh, 8, 26, 27, as I was saying this yesterday, the Holy Spirit help us in our weaknesses. For example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit leads us, uh, pleads for us, believers in harmony with God's will. See, the Holy Spirit will plead on our behalf according to God's will, not according to our own will. Okay, hallelujah. And then Ephesians chapter 6, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. You got to pray at all times, and that means we have to pray all times. And then for the second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, finally, this is Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Finally, brother, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us, pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes. Just as when it came to you, pray to that we will be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not everyone is a believer. Amen. That's the part, that's the, the importance of, of prayer in our life when we are filled and full of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. We will be a prayerful believers when we are full of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is the third major evidence of being baptized and filled of the Holy Spirit. And tomorrow will be our last session together. Hallelujah. The last major evidence is that the unity of the Spirit's evidence. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we just want to sing one song. 